So here at PsyQ every week, we discuss what topics we want to cover on the show. And we got to talking about transgender people. We're hearing a lot more about them, from Caitlyn Jenner to the unfortunate North Carolina bathroom laws. But then we realized, embarrassingly, that we didn't know really anything about what it meant to be transgender. But after researching, I thought, shit, am I transgender? So this term, transgender, what does it mean? Well, it's basically a term for people whose gender identity, gender expression, or behavior doesn't meet what we expect from that sex. So to break this down even more, when we're born, we're assigned a sex, male or female. You're either XX, a female, or XY, a male. There's only two options here. One of the most common genetic disorders is Klinefelter syndrome, where a male is born with an extra chromosome, usually XXY, which affects about one in 500 males. Another genetic variation, Turner syndrome, where a baby girl has just one X chromosome instead of two, affects one in every 5,000 females. Then there's variations called super males, XYY, or super females, XXX. And one out of 4,500 babies shows ambiguous genitalia at birth. Expert data from Brown University estimates at least 1% of all births don't fall strictly within the tight definitions of all male or all female. Okay, so even if we fit neatly into a sex box of male or female, there's a whole lot more to gender than what's between your legs. And that's where gender expression comes in. Gender expression includes behavior, clothing, hairstyle, voice, or body characteristics. All this stuff has gender attached to it. For example, we associate short hair with men and long hair with women. And this is where it gets really confusing really fast. For example, for those of us born female, we almost certainly are going to have gender expressions that are at least partly male, at least some of the time. Whether it's in what we wear, or what we say, or what our body looks like, or our haircut, or all of the above. Being transgender wouldn't even be necessary if there weren't these codes for what it means to be female and what it means to be male. You might be born female, but you become feminine as you learn social behavior. Think about it, if men and women both dressed the same, behaved the same, and were valued equally in every way, and there wouldn't be need to change gender if it didn't match our sex. But there's actually huge expectations for people to fit into gender stereotypes. Really common social punishments for sitting outside these can be name calling and abuse. Narrowly speaking, transgender people are people who question the sex assigned to them at birth and would prefer to live their lives as another gender. And science suggests the reason for this feeling of disagreement between the way you feel and the way you're born might be all in your head. Brain-based research has also shown that people born female but wishing to transition to male may have brains that are more male-like. Basically, you're the mind of a man in the body of a woman. Studies with identical twins have also suggested that transgenderism may be genetic. There's strong evidence that it's your DNA and not your lifestyle that's the most important in transgender identity formation. That's important to note because laws like the North Carolina public toilet law basically discriminate against people because there's this feeling that transitioning genders is just a lifestyle choice, just a phase you're going through. Just one more way policymakers are struggling to keep up with science. Hi everyone, I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching PsyQ and we know you don't want to miss an episode, so please click the subscribe button down below.